Lou, it's Tom Sheehan from Compass. Just wanted to provide you with the breakdown of some areas that you could consider for your investment property uh, in the Cambridge, Greater Cambridge area. So I have a map over here that's going to have a bunch of properties. Here's Boston. Here's Cambridge. Hopefully you can see my cursor over here on the map. Zooming in to Cambridge, um, this is Harvard Square. This is the area that... Um, so something to keep in mind when you're investing in an income property, especially in the Boston area, is how important proximity to public transportation, specifically subway lines, are for um, tenants. So they're going to pay a premium to be walkable uh, to a subway line. So focusing in areas that have that proximity are going to be big. Um, starting in Cambridge, uh, one area to consider is the Kendall Square area. We've seen a ton of development in Kendall. Uh, a lot of that development has been lab space, office space, even some retail. Um, and so we see a lot of um, companies, especially tech and biopharma, uh, investing in those areas. And workers for those companies love to be in close proximity there. So you have a property uh, like 19, 19 Plymouth Street. This is a three family property. Uh, I'll bring it up here. It was listed for $1.8 million. It sold very quickly. So there's a good chance that it's going to sell for beyond that. Um, and what you'll see here is a property that isn't, uh, doesn't look uh, to be in the, the greatest condition, very dated, uh, very old, um, doesn't look to be super well maintained. Uh, a property like this is going to generate of around $55,800 in net rental income. Um, that would give you about a 3% cap rate. So, uh, you know, a property in this prime location, uh, even generating that kind of income is going to put you at about 3% cap rate. And a property like that, where you're likely going to need to catch up on some deferred maintenance uh, is something to consider. Uh, uh, when considering that area. Another property, this is 51 McGee Street. This is a two family, uh, sold for $1.4 million. What I like about this location is it's walkable to a red line. We also have good access to North Alston. There's been a lot of um, investment in North Alston, uh, special, specifically by uh, Harvard in Harvard Business School. Uh, and there's some other uh, good investment over there. So having walkable to that area is going to provide you with some upside. So a property like McGee Street um, calculates out to providing a net income of about $41,400, which translates to about, again, 3% cap rate. But what you'll see about this, this location, uh, a little bit more well-maintained, a little bit more move-in ready, certainly not recently updated, but uh, a bit better than the Plymouth Street property. Uh, so that's another option, uh, only a two-family, uh, but also a good, solid uh, location. A third uh, multifamily that I, I wanted to highlight is this one on Tremore. Uh, so not quite some, maybe some of the high upside that the first two locations have. Uh, this is between Porter Square and um, Harvard Square. Still a very good location. This one sold for $1.875 million. It would produce a net uh, rental income at $63,000 a year. And as you'll see, uh, very uh, move-in ready property looks to be well maintained, probably very easy to rent without requiring any significant um, updating right off the bat. So those are again. So th and that one would work out to about 3.3 percent cap rate. So again, in that 3 percent range, a little bit higher uh, there than in the first two. Um, and then what you can do outside of Cambridge uh, area to consider is Somerville. Now, Somerville recently had some um, uh, regulation put in place by the city that restricted the development of the multifamily homes into con condominiums, uh, basically uh, making it very difficult uh, and not cost effective for developers to uh, come into Somerville and start converting the multifamilies to condos. 
Now, so on one hand, you have a city that is essentially restricting ownership rights, um, which is scaring some people away. But you also, it's presenting some buyer opportunities where um, you're not competing with as many buyers for the, the, the purchase of an income property. So here's an example of a Somerville property. This one is located out of Davis Square. Davis Square has the red line T, very um, appealing to renters. Uh, and you have this unit at Fort Chandler Street that was just sold for $1.3 million. This property generates a net income of about $37,800, so a 3.8% cap rate in a very solid location. And again, um, not super updated, but, again, but in move-in condition as is. Uh, another example of a Somerville rental income property is you have 8 West Street, this one sold for $1.28 million. This seller wasn't uh, effectively using uh, the layout to maximize the rent. So I went ahead and adjusted for what you could reasonably expect if you maximize that rent uh, right out of the gate um, at, in renting it as is. And this one would generate about $47,700 a month uh, in net rental income, which translates to a 3.7% cap rate. And what you'll see here uh, is this one, again, in better condition than some of the Cambridge ones that we were seeing. So uh, presumably require less initial investment renovation and uh, presumably in better condition, so less maintenance uh, needs. Uh, another um, Somerville property that I wanted to highlight, this one is not currently walkable to a train station, but we are uh, have a... Uh, new rail, rail line being developed in Boston, which should be ready in the next year or two, called the Green Line Extension. So right now the Green Line ends at Leachmere Stop, but it's moving into Union Square and then adding four stops, one at Gilman Square, Lagoon Square, Ball Square, and College Avenue, which is next to Tufts. Um, I would have loved to show you a uh, East Somerville um, or Union Square example, but unfortunately we just didn't have any that would have fit what we were talking about here. But here we have one at 11 Partridge Ave. So again, not walkable to a train right now, but uh, as you'll see in a few years, it's going to be within two blocks of the Magoon Square stop. So this is a three family, sold for only $1.15 million. Uh, at its current net rent of, um, $48,600 a year, it's at a 4.2% cap rate. But it's reasonable to expect that once the uh, Green Line extension stop is available to the tenants, that the premium for that rent is going to go up and you're going to have much more upside than you do now. Again, not super updated, but seemingly pretty relatively well maintained, fairly move in ready, um, good condition rental property uh, for um, a place that has such upside. You can also find the same green line extension upside uh, and get really good value when looking in Medford. Medford borders Somerville uh, right on this Broadway area. You can see there's Tufts University, which is located in Medford. This is Medford Center. So getting close, you can be in Medford and have a property that is gets the green line upside, but doesn't have the same price point uh, that a Somerville does. Here's an example here. This is 29 Albion Street in Medford. And uh, this one has a current uh, net income of $38,700 as is um, based on the current layout. The, this seller also wasn't maximizing their rental income based on the layout. And I took the liberty to make give you the, the true um, current rental income projection, that works out to a cap rate of 4.8%. So we're almost about 50% higher capitalization rate uh, for this property than some of the Cambridge properties we saw. And as you'll see with this one, again, much more move-in ready, uh, not in the need of any newer renovations or updates to maximize the rent. You could pr pretty much just purchase this a property like this and rent it out and maximize your rent, which uh, obviously is very appealing. 
Another example here is 14 Whitmore Street in Medford. Here you have uh, a three family that sold for just under a million dollars, uh, three two bedroom units, which um, have a current net income uh, of $49,500. And again, a, a pretty move in ready unit that doesn't need uh, some dramatic amount of updating or renovating to rent right away and maximize your rents. So that, that, cap rate is 5%. So you can see just moving a few miles outside uh, of Cambridge, you can get a pretty uh, dramatic increase in your return. Now, Cambridge is going to provide uh, provide you the most stability in value. Uh, it's considered an A, a grade A um, location. Somerville probably a minus B plus, depending on where in some reveal you are in Medford closer to a B. But again, you have this upside available to you in, in the Somerville and Medford properties in that you're not just going to see in some of the other areas. Now, in the alternative to getting a multi unit building, you could uh, attempt to purchase a single unit um, and rent that out. Unfortunately, 1010 Memorial Drive doesn't allow for rentals, so you can't rent out 1010 Memorial Drive. But as you can see, if you can get in that mid $4,000 rental rate, um, you can get a cap rate comparable to some of the multifamilies. So this, this unit is on Concord Ave. It rented for $4,800, three bedroom, two bath. We have a, uh, another one over here, 430 Broadway in Cambridge, rented for $4,650. So um, if you could get a three three bed, two bath unit in a premium area of Cambridge that's walkable to a T, you could generate a similar cap rate to some of the multi units. Here you have 88 Hammond Street, a three bedroom, two bath that sold for $1.275 million. And as you'll see, it's condo quality, uh, it's in good condition, it's been owner occupied likely as opposed to had um, been used by renters, so it's more well cared for. Um, another example here is um, this unit on 20 Sacramento Place. This is a new renovation, uh, walkable to a T in between Harvard and Central Square. And you could reasonably expect a rental rate in that mid fours. So generating a similar cap rate to some of the other multifamily units. Pluses on these types of units is that you are going to have, um, in theory, less uh uh, maintenance concerns or property management, you would hope that maybe some other unit owners in the building would take the lead on overall property management. So you don't have to deal with that. Uh, some downside is you're, you're um, at the mercy of your other unit owners. So if they decide um, that they don't want to allow rentals anymore, they could impact your use of the property. So upsides and downsides there. Um, ultimately, uh, Investing in uh, any of these areas, I think, are a good investment, all for their different reasons. Um, and I hope this gives you a pretty good primer on what your options are. If you have any questions about a particular property or want me to focus on a particular area or um, a particular location or type of property, happy to do this. I hope this is a good initial primer and helpful to you and uh, looking forward to hearing back from you. Talk to you soon.